What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the NFL Red Alert recap. And we're going to start off right now with the Browns and the Ravens. Now, obviously, this game, you know, it was a it was a blowout. Like, they were getting taken care of accordingly. But you got to remember, Kaiser had that migraine issue. And um, he was out for a little bit. I don't think it really mattered. The Ravens' defense is playing out of their mind right now. Um, I don't really know how else to describe what's going on. Uh, offensively, they're looking, they're clicking, they're scoring. They're, they're getting to the end zone. I, I really have no complaints about the Ravens. Uh, people have been asking me, do I think that they're real contenders? Um, right now, Suggs is looking like he's kind of ageless. But remember, when they play the Patriots, it goes either way. I think the Ravens can beat the Patriots. I think they're one of the only teams that when the playoffs come, they realistically can take the Patriots out. Like if we're just talking, uh, the, the way the Patriots looked in week one, we're going to get to the Patriots in a second about how they rebounded from the Chiefs' loss. But I don't think that when the Patriots are in top form, there are many teams that can take them out, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, everybody's going to lose. It's one game. But the Ravens, for some reason, playing very, very well. So I can go. I can probably see them being a contender. If they can stay consistent, the Browns, we already know who their coach is, right? Hugh Jackson, um, you could tell by his face. I don't know if you guys saw the challenge that happened when, uh, with the touchdown when they just had it on uh, right before the half, when they had the camera right on Hugh Jackson's face, and it's like, he just knew. Like, I don't, I don't even know what he's doing there, to be honest with you. If you're a Browns fan, I feel really, really bad for you because he's just not the guy. And uh, the Ravens just obliterated them. I'm surprised that they got those points. But, um, you know, it is what it is. They were never expected to win. That was easy money if you bet that with the, uh, with the spread and everything like that. Going on with the Buccaneers and the Bears, um, this game was complete, a complete travesty from the beginning to the end. The Buccaneers beat the blood out of these guys. They scored in garbage time way at the end. Uh, Mike Glennon has an issue with just standing there and getting sacked. I don't know if that's something that he likes to do or if it's something that they teach him in practice, but he's very good at it. He just stands there and waits for people to tackle him. Um, I was very surprised, though, because I know that with the Texans, you saw how they immediately took out um, Savage and put in uh, Deshaun Watson. I, I don't think that they want to put Trubisky in yet because as bad as this was, Mike Glennon was still taking snaps in the fourth quarter. So I don't think that they're ready to go away from Mike Glennon. I think simply because of their pride because they brought Mike Glennon there for a reason, and um, obviously they moved up in the draft to take Trubisky, but I do think a mobile quarterback would help as far as the way the Bears play um, with their offensive line play. I think that having a mobile quarterback like Trubisky would be a lot better for that offense. I don't think that Glennon is going to make it through. I don't think he'll be there midway through the season. If you guys think different, leave it in the comments. The guy, you know what it is? Last week, he played very, very strong. With, you know, in that two-minute drill, the receivers dropped the ball. They could have possibly beaten the Falcons. Um, but, the, the, you know, against the Bucs, it was just disgusting. It was really, really bad. The Bucks looked really, really good. Um, I did expect them to do a little bit more. Deshaun Jackson was overthrown several times. I think uh, Jameis Winston is going to have to get used to him being there with that speed and understand that he's going to have to put it on the dime. Um, but the, the Bucs look decent. And I can't really... I don't really have any complaints about the Buccaneers other than they allowed them to score in the end. They should have just got the whole – they should have got the shutout. I was very disappointed that they allowed the Bears to score in the end. Um, but things happen, and, um, you know, garbage time is garbage time. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Mike Glennon, he should probably do, like, a course on how to stand there like a statue because he's really good at that. The Vikings and the Steelers. Um, this game was very, very tough to watch because, obviously, we know Bradford was out. Um, it wasn't a good scene. Uh, the Vikings weren't able to score. Uh, it was a, the Steelers' defense was playing unbelievable, but a lot of that has to do with the way the offense was. Um, they completely bottled up Dalvin Cook, like it was a really, it, it was it was vintage Steelers play. You know what I'm saying? Like it was it was that type of game to where you knew the Steelers came to play and it was about to be a problem, and they 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 really showed out, man. Um, defensively, the Vikings tried their best to hold their own, but Martavis Bryant, man, if he could just stop smoking weed for like two minutes and just be there to play with them throughout the season. That dude is a very, very wild, deep threat, man. Um, sometimes very, very uncoverable. And that's what happened in this game. Like, like I said, you got people need to understand something. A lot of the reason why the Steelers weren't able to take advantage of the teams that they had in the past and possibly beat the Patriots in the playoffs was because of suspensions for guys, you know, having to get the weed, you know, dudes doing DUIs. Dudes do really ridiculous things. Um, and... It's a lot of it's it's a growing up thing that they have to you know really deal with. But Martavis Bryant, as long as he's able to put away his bong and just come out there and play football, this is a very dangerous team. And Antonio Brown and all these and Le'Veon Bell, listen, Big Ben Roethlisberger looking like vintage Big Ben, like it's really it's going to be a problem. The Vikings, their quarterback situation is going to hurt them defensively. They can play defense, but 
it, it starts to wear you down when you know that your offense is inept and nothing's going to happen on that offensive side of the ball. So I don't really expect much until I fi- – they got to figure out what's going on. Even if they had Teddy Bridgewater or something, I, look, I don't know what's happening, but um, it, it's not looking really – it's not looking good right now. It's definitely not looking good. So um, we have to wait to see exactly how this transpires. Um, but I don't like the way the Vikings off- offense is looking if they don't have a guy that's competent behind the center. Patriots and the Saints. Now, look, let's just let's just go right now and just – the same way I told you guys, and I gave the Chiefs their props. I gave the Chiefs their props. I said, yo, listen, they beat the blood out of the Patriots. I would not want to be a part of that practice that the, the Patriots had to go through that week. I would not want to be the team that had to face the Patriots the week later. And oh my goodness, bro, Tom Brady, three touchdowns in the first quarter. Look, this, this, is, the, this is the thing I've been trying to tell everybody. When you start to compare quarterbacks, right? And I know everybody's like, yeah, Tom Brady, system QB. System QBs is not throwing three touchdowns in the first quarter. You see, every time people do things and say things like that, he always shows you that it's – Bill Belichick gets a lot of credit for everything that goes on with the Patriots. I'm not taking anything for, taking anything away from Bill Belichick. I think that Bill Belichick having Tom Brady benefited him more as far as his legacy. You see what I'm saying? Because he was able to now create a system because he had a competent quarterback where he's able to do different things that other quarterbacks couldn't do. And in turn doing so, he, he developed a system where the Patriots are pretty much, they got a field goal off in like 13 seconds, bro. They're, they're by far the best coach team in the National Football League. Like, I, look, I don't really want to hear about all the deflate gates and the spy gates. I know the spy gate had a lot of proof behind it. I know a lot of other coaches may have tried it in the past, um, and they just weren't as successful as Bill Belichick. But he also has come back after that and still had success. So he's shown that he can do it without it. So I don't really want to bring all that, you know, back into it. That past is the past. What we're talking about right now is greatness. When you come out there, and, t- and that touched on he threw the grunt when he was getting sacked, and people are like, yeah, he don't got no arm strength. I don't think people realize it's hard enough at 40 to be able to get the ball in the air, but when a guy is pulling you down and you still throw it with that type of accuracy, and then grunt being hurt, look, I don't know what's going on with that, but we've seen him win the Super Bowl without grunt being down 28-3, to so I'm not really worried about grunt. I think that I think the Patriots should stop probably moving on, but they just completely waxed the Saints. It, it was, look, I don't want to talk about the Saints. You see what I'm saying? Like, like Saints, you just shouldn't have been there. Wrong place, wrong time. Eagles and Chiefs, oh, look, complete shootout, but the Chiefs allowed them, you know, they got that onside kick at the end. Carson Wentz played as well as he could play, um, but the Chiefs' defense is on another level. They were, they were in a whole nother level. And this boy, Kareem Hunt, man, I, look, listen, man, the Chiefs are very, very scary right now. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. They're extremely scary. Just so you know, if they're on your schedule, that's all I'm going to say about that. Titans and the Jags. Titans came out and took care of business. The Jags got lucky, bro. They beat the hell out of a Titans, I mean, a a Texans team that had a guy named Tom Savage on the center, bro. I already knew that the Titans were going to win this game just for the fact that the Jags are the Jags. But good thing for Leonard Fournette getting his touchdown at the end of the game. He helped out a lot of fantasy owners. And that's all that really matters when you're watching these kind of football games because we all knew what the Jags were. Like, if you picked the Jags to win this game, you probably were drinking that Maurice Jones Drew tea and watching that show. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't ever drink that tea, bro. Don't ever drink that tea. The Jags are the Jags. They will remain to be. The, they will remain the Jags. As long as you have Blake Bortles as your quarterback, I'm going to pick everybody else. Unless it's like Mike Glennon. I'm going to pick everybody else um, other than Blake Bortles. And that's how I picked this game right here. When I picked the Titans, I just said, oh, Blake Bortles, quarterback. All right. Who else is there? Oh, somebody or somebody I don't know. Oh, Mariota. All right. I'll take him. That's it. Don't matter what it is. All right. Cardinals and Colts. Um, I think Bruce Arians needs to be fired. Like right now. I think that Carson Palmer is washed up. I think that they suck. You have a guy, Jacoby Brisket. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I, look, I'm not going to call him Brisket. I'm going to call him Brisket. Dude is a slab of beef. Dude comes out. They're winning the game outright. He just starts doing wild, ridiculous things. And this is what I'm saying. This is the guy that the Patriots got rid of, and he could have possibly been able to win games with the Patriots, going back to you know people giving credit to Bill Belichick and the system. But a lot of it has to do with the decisions that the quarterback makes. You could put anybody in a position to win, but if the guy doesn't have common sense and he looks at the other team and he throws the ball directly to them, you can't coach somebody out of that. You see what I'm saying? You can't, you can't say, all right, bro, this is the scheme. We know their signals. We know everything about them, but um, do everything – other than throw the ball to the other team. If you have to tell a quarterback that, you're not going to have success. And that's what's happening with the Colts. 
The Colts are bad even with Andrew Luck, but it's worse. It's a, it's like 30 times worse. But they still are the same. Like, Andrew Luck is going to get you some things, but Andrew Luck, he throws the ball to the other team just as much as any other quarterback in the league. And that, that's bad with the interception. So, you know what I'm saying? But the Colts had this game under wraps. The Cardinals were somehow able to come back and win it. I don't believe in the Cardinals. I don't think they have anything to offer. I think that they're going to just – they're done already. Uh, David Johnson is taking pictures in the hospital with his wrist surgery. Like, it's turning into, like, a, a soap opera. The Cardinals are finished. But what I'm saying is the reasoning behind why I'm saying that Bruce Arians needs to go is because when you're a coach and you believe in Carson Palmer, that alone should get you fired and banned from the NFL. And that's just my opinion. If I'm an owner – and I'm looking at Carson Palmer, I understand visibly, you know, I'm blessed with eyesight and vision that if I'm seeing what this guy is doing, he should not be on my football team. And if my coach is going to start him, my coach is also an idiot. But I'm an owner, so I could sit back and wait to see because my coach should come to me and be like, yo, this guy sucks. Let's get rid of him. But I don't think Bruce Arians is doing that. I think Bruce Arians really believes in Carson Palmer. And because of that, I think he should be relieved of his duties. Carson Palmer should just donate his entire uh, salary to charity and just, you know, just, just move on. The guy sucks. Bills and Panthers. The Bills gave the Panthers a run for their money. I, look, the Panthers are like the worst 2-0 that I've seen in a long time. Cam Newton is a very inaccurate quarterback. He remains to be so. There were a lot of overthrows, as, as usual. He did escape. It was one point it was an injury scare. He came back into the game, you know, blah, blah, blah. The guy, look, the Panthers are not going to win the Super Bowl. You know, it's very hard for me to, you know, deal with a lot of the diehard Panther fans because they had their shot, man, and the Denver Broncos took it away from them. And it, it, that's – Cam Newton is not – he's just not that guy, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Look, well, I'm not sorry. I'm, I'm just saying it. It's just like, like a way that people say it when they're saying something rude. It's sort of like saying with all, resp with all due respect and you just say something completely rude. He, he's, he's, he's a suitable QB, but as far as throwing the ball from the pocket, he's never been that guy. And – I don't know if he can make that throw that the team needs in crunch time. I just don't know. And that's what makes me very fearful for that team. He's just not he, – he has the legs. He can make some short throws. He can make – you know, he threw a couple slants, dots. He's just not that guy, bro. It, it is what – like, I'm just being very, very honest about it. He's just not that guy. And, and I, I wish him nothing but the best, but he's not winning a Super Bowl. The Panthers are not, the Panthers are not winning the Super Bowl, bro. Because Cam Newton is just Cam Newton, man. He's just the guy that's going to run around and do the, just throw the ball anywhere else, bro. He's just throwing the ball wherever. Like, come on. Like, so, he's still doing the same exact things that he was doing when he first came in. And I know he has all these stats with the rushing touchdowns and the passes, all that stuff. But he's just extremely inaccurate. And that's going to be a problem when they need him the most. Jets and the Raiders. Crabtree had a coming out party, bro. Dude was doing F bro, bust the screen. Yo, what the, why would they have bust the screen on Crabtree in the red zone? The Jets, Todd Bowles, he needs to be relieved of his duties and just, you know what? They should take his contract and just make him a janitor and pay him the same amount. Just make him a janitor and let him clean the toilets after dudes have diarrhea, like that real nasty stuff. And just him, he is such, he is horrible, bro. That guy, look, I don't want to hear, oh yeah, but the team sucks. Bro, you took the job. You got to bring the best out of that team. I've seen other coaches with less in the past do more. It's all about the coach at the end of the day. That's why you're paid. It's a reflection. Yeah, you make decent money and stuff like that, but you got to be able to provide something for the fans. And even if your team is bad, like nobody expects the Jets to win any games this year, but that's your job as a coach to instill another mindset. The way that I'm looking at it right now, he has them thinking the same way I'm thinking that the Jets just outright suck. Crabtree did his thing. The Raiders, Amari Cooper, Derek Carr, all these. Marshawn Lynch is just an, I'm just so happy he got away from the Seahawks. I'm so happy, bro. Because that man has so much more football left in him, and he's such a beast, and he deserves that name, Beast Mode. And, look, the Raiders are very dangerous as well, but I really like the Chiefs in that division. We have to wait to see how it goes, but I'm really loving me some Marshawn Lynch. Dolphins and the Chargers. Young Ho, the kicker of the Chargers, he needs to just go back to wherever he came from. I don't know what he's doing, why he's doing it, but his name suits him. He's a young Ho. That dude sucks, but Jay Cutler looked really good. And I don't give compliments, bro, to, to Jay Cutler usually. The dude sucks. But, oh, my goodness, he made some throws on the run yesterday. I was very impressed. And like I said, the beauty of me, I don't have, I don't have a favorite team. I just watch the game and just completely look at it and break it down and try to figure out how I'm going to tell you guys how it works in this recap. Jay Cutler looked really, really good yesterday. And that's very, very bad for people that thought he was going to be the same bum because he still has a big arm. And if he could buckle down and make those throws like that, O-M-G. 
Philip Rivers, again, puts the team in proper position. And they still F him over two weeks in a row. Kickers, this is why people hate kickers, bro. You had one job, young ho. If he's not released by the time this podcast is done, the Chargers don't care about winning, bro. I would put anybody. I'll just go in the corner and just like, oh, you, oh, you, you play football? They'd be like, nah, all right, come come with me. Anybody other than young ho right now. Because that, that's what it is. You can't allow yourself to have a guy that the game comes down to. Why do you think Vinatieri? Vinatieri is definitely going to the Hall of Fame. That dude was so clutch when he was needed. Unbelievable. But you can't have stuff like this, man. I feel bad for the Charger fans for them not to go through that two weeks in a row. A possible overtime and now a loss is very, very disgusting by Young Ho. 49ers and Seahawks. The Seahawks are a very, very bad offensive team, and it showed in this game. I don't expect the Seahawks to be doing anything this year. I do think that they still have that hangover from the Super Bowl when they didn't give Marshawn Lynch the ball. Um, I think the defense is up in arms with Russell Wilson, even though he did make a lot of great plays, uh, escape, throw, throw some dots and things like that. I do think, I, I, you know, I think that there's still, it, it's, it's like outrage going on in that locker room. I don't think that everybody's on the same page. They're just not the same team. 49ers fought, they fought so hard, man. They fought so hard. They could have won this game. Um, it came down to that last second touchdown that, you know, they were able to get with the Seahawks. And then the 49ers couldn't obviously move the ball down the field. They did miss the field goal when they scored the Seahawks. That's why it looks like that. Should have been 13-9. But um, the Seahawks are an app, bro. They, they, they don't have a good offense. Offensive line sucks. Defense, whatever. It is what it is. I don't expect anything out of the Seahawks this year. Redskins and the Rams. This was a hard fought, fought game, bro. And Jared Goff looks a lot better to his credit. Um, the Redskins just somehow was able to pull this out, man. Because I really thought that, you know, once they gained some momentum, I thought the Rams could have taken this game. Aaron Donald was out there. You know, the guys are playing well on D. But they gave up that big screenplay after that big uh, loss. And I think that kind of deflated them. Um, but the Rams are what the are what we thought they were. They're not they're not too good. They're not too bad. But oh my goodness, with these hurdles, bro. With Gurley, like what? Yo, he should have just did track and field, bro. The dude should have just did track and field. I think he's in the wrong sport. That dude is so athletic, it's ridiculous. And the thing that scares me about him is once he starts to wear down as he gets older, I don't know if he's gonna be as valuable because a lot of his game is jumping over dudes and so much athleticism. And oh my goodness, yo, he he's a very exciting player to watch, man. And the Rams could be very dangerous. But, you know, with the Redskins coming out and pulling this one out, I think it kind of takes a little bit away from them. But uh, I, it, was, it wasn't a boring game to flip back and forth through. You know, for the most part, when I'm flipping through games, uh, I like the ones that, are, that, you know, that, that, you know, draw my eye to it. The Rams were looking good, and I'm not usually watching Rams games. Uh, but they looked really, really good. Um, you know, it is what it is. Kirk Cousins was able to come through and make some, you know, he threw some dots. Kudos to him. Again, the Redskins in the NFC East, I don't expect them to make the playoffs. But kudos to them for pulling out this win, man. It was huge. Um, Cowboys and the Broncos. The Cowboys should be embarrassed. Uh, the Broncos beat, yo, this game, they weren't even supposed to even have 17 points. And for everybody that was saying, yeah, Dak Prescott is not rated high enough, all that stuff like that, yes, he is. Because what happens when you take Zeke out the game? He ain't make no plays. He didn't make the plays. Yeah, Des Bryant, you know, he caught that one catch on Talib. But that was it, man. Look, you couldn't do anything. Dudes was locked up. Locked up. And if you're that guy, if you're if Dak Prescott is supposed to be that guy without the Zeke Elliott, and yeah, we're gonna the next guy up and all that stuff he's talking about. Yeah, the next guy up what? You ain't do nothing when they boxed up Zeke. Zeke, look, running backs are not gonna have great games every game, but that's how you get to tell who the good quarterbacks are when they're able to pull something out. Dak Prescott got it. Yo, listen, bro. He's showing he, these are some grown pains. It's gonna happen. It is what it is. The Broncos looked amazing. Simeon looked good. Uh, you know, Von Miller finally got the sack. He was jumping off sides the whole entire game. The um, secondary, Chris Harris to leave. All those guys, man, locked up Beasley. Uh, Witten dropped a, a, a clear touchdown. Like, it, they just destroyed. They annihilated the Cowboys. And if the Broncos continues to play like this, listen, man, I, I, don't, I don't even want to talk about it right now. Let's just wait till we get to midseason. Packers and the Falcons. Aaron Rodgers, bro. When you come out here, and the game wasn't supposed to be this close. This, this game was blown wide open. This was a lot of garbage time scores at the end for fantasy football. I'm going to tell you this right now. Shout out to uh, the Falcons with that new Mercedes-Benz uh, stadium. It looks so ridiculously good. It looks so, and all those new additions, man. Congratulations to them bouncing back to be 2-0 after losing in the Super Bowl in that choking fashion. But I'm going to tell you this right now, man. The Packers got the, yo, Jordy Nelson is hurt. Yo, that, it was bad. All that defense talk about the Packers and all, no. Nah, you played the Seattle Seahawks, bro. 
The Seattle Seahawks don't really got an offense. You know what I'm saying? That one-week stuff, that's why I don't really buy into that whole one-week stuff. Same thing I told you about the Patriots. I knew they were going to come back and beat the blood out of somebody. This right here was an embarrassment, bro. Aaron Rodgers throwing picks. I don't know if that guy, Allison, I don't know. See, that interception that he threw, I don't know if it was whose fault it was. I don't know what's going on, but Aaron Rodgers is not playing like Aaron Rodgers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's, something's going on with this guy, but it doesn't really look good uh, at this point in the season to know exactly who's going to be like top ranking for MVP and stuff like that. Um, but this was a complete catastrophe. You cannot cover Julio Jones. Sanu has uh, short hands. Devontae Freeman, these boys, Coleman. This offense should have definitely won the Super Bowl, and I know they still wake up in cold sweats because it's so hard to get to the Super Bowl, and I highly doubt they're going back this year. But if they do, I think they just might win it and change history because their offense is so ridiculous, and their defense is very, very fast and not too shabby as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this NFL Red Alert recap for Week 2. Make sure you tune in tomorrow when we talk about the Giants and the Lions. Make sure you subscribe, share. It's always one love.